this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how commercial property is valued using the three main methods. Hi, my name is Andrew Bean. I'm the host of the Commercial Property Show, founder of CP Data, founder of the Cashflow for Life Meetup Group, and I'm here today to show you how to value commercial property so you can get really confident putting down offers on deals and making sure that you're not overpaying for your property. Okay, so there are three main methods that we use to value commercial property that a valuer will actually use a blend of all three of these when they're putting together a valuation for you. So the first one is the capitalization income approach. So the cap rate approach. The second one that they use is the sales comparison approach. Okay, so it's sales comparison. So the third one that they use is the replacement cost approach. So how much would it cost to replace the entire asset? All right, so first off, I'm gonna talk about the replacement cost. Okay, so when things are being built back in the day, obviously money was cheaper. There wasn't a huge uh, increase in the cost of uh, building materials and things like that. So buildings that are older usually will have a higher replacement cost today than they did back then. You've also got to factor in the cost of the land as well in today's prices. And you've also got to factor in the development as well. So on a profit, a self storage property that I own, there's literally like over a million dollars worth of concrete, you know, so you've got to factor in all these things to, to build it as is in today's prices. And that's how they would use and look at the replacement cost. And what they actually do is they might use a blend of all three of the ways you value this. But in real life, as an investor, we don't really use a blend of all three. We only really lean on one of these approaches and I'll show you that one at the very end. So the replacement costs, obviously we just spoken about that. The sales comparison approach is also one that we may use, but it's more of a residential way of looking at investing. So the sales comparison approach really comes down to, is the property that you're looking at like for like, tenant for tenant, lease for lease. That's a very, very important thing when you're doing a sales comparison approach because if you're not like comparing apples with apples, then your comparison could be so way off that your, your value that you put on the actual asset that you're buying could be hugely way off anyway. So you've gotta be very, very careful that you, know, you, can't, you can't compare uh, an industrial property that's sold in the area to a retail property. It just doesn't make sense. They're totally different asset classes. They're totally different sectors. They're in a totally different cycle of people wanting to actually buy those types of assets. So you cannot compare those types of assets together. It has to be like for like. So a minimum industrial to industrial, and then what is the income being generated from that asset? What is the tenant look like for that asset? And what is the length of the lease on that asset? So this is why the, like comparing things and comparables in commercial property is a very difficult game because there's not usually that many comparables. It's not like a house, a residential house, where you can say, oh, it's got, it's got four beds, two baths, two, two garages. It's in the same street, it's pretty comparable. Um, but even if you have an industrial property in the same street in a market, um, you'd be looking at it and saying, okay, well, one is 100 square meters, the other could be 300 square meters. It's a totally different business that might utilize that property. So, and also like one could have a one or two year lease and the other one might have a five year lease. So you have to factor in all of these things when you're doing a comparison. So if you are comparing like that kind of a, a, a deal where it's a, a smaller property with a smaller lease and then you've got a, a larger property with a longer lease, the larger property with a longer lease should have been sold at a tighter cap rate, a lower cap rate than the one that has a smaller property and a shorter lease. Because the way that commercial property is valued and perceived is that the longer the lease, the safer it is, um, the, the less risk and the better it is to actually invest in that asset. So you've got to make sure that you're actually doing the like to like. And why a lot, of, a lot of valuers and the way that it's done with investors as well is you might not really be checking the asset as comparing the two on the actual dollar value that it was sold at. You're actually comparing the cap rate that it was sold at, which actually feeds back into the income capitalization approach. So this one actually feeds into this one. So that's why I said at the start of the video that uh, a valuer 
will use a blend of all three of these. So with the capitalization income approach, this is really the main way that commercial property is valued with valuers and also in the day-to-day -day investment world. So if you know that there's a, a property in a market cap of say six, and this property right here, so we're doing the cap rate uh, uh, scenario. So if you know that this particular property is in a cap market cap rate of 6%, so a six cap, and the property is generating $60,000 of net income. Very important in commercial property, we talk about net income. Then that particular property would be valued at $1 million. So I'll show you how you actually calculate that. So it's 60,000 divided by 0 0.06, the capitalization rate, and then that gives you your value of 1 million. Okay, so when you're looking at this and doing this, um, you can actually do like a, you can actually use all of these methods yourself. So for instance, if you're looking at a really large asset like a, an industrial warehouse or a self-storage facility, you can look at that and, and talk to a builder and say, how much would that cost per square meter to replace, right? And how much would the land cost in today's prices? And then you can kind of understand if it might be a good deal or not, because you can figure out how much they're asking for the property that you're looking at or how much you valued it at. And then you can say, okay, well, if I was to build that today, it might cost me $2 million more. So I'm kind of getting a really good deal on this. It was way cheaper to build back then and I'm getting a great deal today, okay? And then when you're looking at comparable sales, you can also be thinking, okay, in this market, what is the most comparable property you have in this market to look at? So if it's trading at around a 6% or a six cap, um, then you might be able to apply that kind of a six cap to your property as well. And so for instance, like, if your property that you're looking at has a five year lease, but you're looking at a property that sold and it had a three year lease, then you might apply a little bit of a sharper cap rate to your property. So if it was a six cap that the three year lease sold at, then you might actually apply a 5.8% cap to your property because you have a little bit better covenant. You still have to like take into those things into account, but the clearest way that commercial property is valued and the most, the easiest way to understand, the easiest way to calculate is the income capitalization rate approach. So as I said before, the income capitalization rate approach is really the, the main way that we value commercial property. You can calculate it, you can understand it. It's very, very easy to do as long as you know the net income that that property is generating. So if the agent has given you the net income for the property, fantastic. But if you need to calculate that yourself, the simple formula or the simple way of doing that, so it goes gross income, minus outgoings gives you the net income. Divide the net income by the capitalization rate gives you the value. So now that you know how commercial property is valued, you might want to know the cheapest and quickest way to add millions of dollars of value to that commercial property after you've purchased it. If you want to check that out, you can check out my next video just here. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.